In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we pray. The Holy Spirit may be with us, whatever we share through the media, particularly concerning the preparation for that of June, led by the Porto Diocese, may be a success as it is known through the media, the people in Uganda and far beyond. For this we ask the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. All the matters of Uganda, pray for us. the Lord be with you. And with your may the God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, dear people of God, men and women of goodwill, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it was last month, actually on the day of 14th February, uh, the day of uh, Valentine, but also the Feast of St. Cecilia and Methodio, that we received the official communication uh, from the Uganda Episcopal Conference that uh, Fort Porto Diocese will be leading or animating the celebration of the 3rd of June, Matters Day, at Namugongo. Uh, this came a bit late because of the corona pandemic. So our task that we are given is to animate this celebration of the Uganda Matters Day uh, this year as Fort Porto Diocese. And uh, we take this with, uh, uh, with the great pride. And uh, we hope and pray that this will profit the different uh, pilgrims who will come to Namgongo and even countrywide and even internationally. Uh, we have a number of tasks that we have uh, already carried out, which I want to outline. Uh, the first is uh, we have already accepted this challenge. Uh, we had it last as Fort Porto Diocese in 1997. And since then, uh, this celebration of Namgong has grown greatly. I think there used to be about 300 people, but now we have uh, over a million people who come for this celebration of Namgongo. As Fort Porto Diocese, we have chosen this theme, baptized and sent to witness Christ with love and hope. This is based on Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and Romans chapter 8 verse 35. This theme is reflecting how the martyrs died. There were men of faith who had been baptized by water, but some were not yet baptized, but they received the baptism of blood. Otherwise, they are not yet baptized, but they were being prepared to be baptized, but they died without being baptized. So that to consider is the baptism of blood. They had a great love for Christ. That's why they opted to die than obey Kabaka Mwanga. They are not threatened by the sword or the fire. With love and hope, they look to life after death and the resurrection without any fear. So many of them died by the sword uh, and the fire at Namgongo, as you know. So my dear brothers and sisters, this theme invites us and inspires us as Ugandans, especially in this post-COVID uh, time, uh, when we have to witness to our love and have hope in Christ in the different challenges that we have as individuals, as families, as institutions, and even our government. We are going through so many socioeconomic hardships or challenges of sickness, of unemployment, of poverty, uh, death, among others. Some people have even lost hope. As Christians and as Ugandans, we need to be inspired by the martyrs of Uganda, not to give up. They face several hardships and challenges in their lives. Like, for example, when the missionaries uh, ran to Tanzania, these martyrs by themselves, they continue to share the faith and encourage each other without giving up, and indeed they succeeded by giving their lives to the Lord. So this celebration is a great opportunity for us as Fort Porto Diocese, together with the faithful in Uganda and the Universal Church, to learn more about the, the matter's witness to Christ with love and hope and seek their intercession. It is a moment of spiritual renewal as we strive 
to preach the gospel and fight the evils in society around us today. I'd like to mention the work in progress of the teams which are working now. We have a steering committee uh, which I have put in place, headed by Father Charles Oyo, who is the pastor coordinator and now the chairman of this committee, being helped by Dr. Patrick Brung, who is next to me here, uh, he as his voice, and there are other members of the steering committee. There are other subcommittees which have been put in place, working in tandem with the steering committee, like the liturgy committee, the finance committee, the protocol and security committee, the catering, transport, transport construction, and decoration, finance, and many others. There are meetings taking place back in Fort Potro and also here in Kampala for this function. We have sought uh, government's guidance on the nature of the celebrations, uh, but unfortunately we have not yet got a response from them as what format this uh, celebration should take. Um, so, but we are optimistic that they may allow us to have full blast of this celebration. We have written several letters to of appeal to the diocesan uh, parishes of Fort Potro and other bodies for this same cause. We have a detailed budget which is close to about one billion, uh, which uh, is the money that we need in Ugandan shillings for this celebration to be uh, held successfully. A choir of about 200 members has been selected and they have started making their practices uh, in the few days to come. We have a number of strategies. One of those is that uh, we have engaged some of our ministers from the Porto Diocese, like Honorable Tom Butime, the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Frank Mwebaze, the Minister of Agriculture, uh, to help us coordinate with Dr. Patrick Birung here to mobilize uh, the government officials and other people here in Kampala. We also have contacted the different corporate and business bodies uh, to mobilize and advertise in the souvenir magazine, which will soon be out. However, we have uh, a number of gaps because we have been uh, informed at short notice. So one of the huge gaps is that of finances. So we have plans and appeals. Actually, on the 1st of May this year, we shall be celebrating uh, Holy Mass with Cage Fodder. This is a group of Fort Porto Catholics who reside here in Kampala, in Tebe and Ginger. And uh, I'll be coming to celebrate Mass with them as one way of fundraising. This actually will be at Ketente Primary School, uh, where we hope a number of people will turn up. On the 2nd of May, we shall have a fundraising dinner here in Kampala to solicit funds for this same celebration. There will be other joint conferences uh, with the Uganda Episcopal Conference which shall be held to continuously update the public about the progress of the preparations. In special, I continue to appeal to all people of goodwill to support for the Porto Diocese in realizing a successful and fruitful celebration of this Uganda Matters Day. Uh, with spiritual, financial, moral, and social uh, support, uh, we hope we shall succeed, particularly when we raise the one billion Ugandan shillings that we have uh, made in our budget. The money can be deposited uh, on an account in Centenary Bank and also on MTN and uh, Airtel, which are in my names. As I conclude, I would like to extend our gratitude to the Uganda Episcopal Conference for giving Fort Porto Diocese the opportunity to lead and animate Uganda Matters Day the 3rd of June this year. We thank the government of Uganda and its various organs for giving us collaborative support. I'd like to appreciate all those who are praying for the success of this event and with God's help 
We hope all will go well. Uh, you are all welcome to Namugongo to celebrate with the Fort Porto Diocese on the 3rd of June this year. And we hope with the intercession of the Uganda Matters, everything will go well because we are doing this in the spirit of the Matters of Uganda for the love of Christ, promotion of unity and peace for the good of our country and the world at large. I thank you very much for your attention and may God bless you.